As we begin our worship this morning, I'm going to invite you to stand as we sing our opening hymn for today, number 434, The Love of Jesus Calls Us. announcements. First, I commend the announcements that you'll find at the back of your bulletin to you, and uh, particularly uh, on your insert as well, the upcoming schedule of services for Holy Week and Easter, so you can start to get those details into your calendars when you're able to be with us. Uh, just a couple of other things to mention, of course, tomorrow, May the 4th, May the Wow, as if the year's not going by fast enough. April the 4th, the ACW meeting will take place in the large hall at 1 o'clock. A reminder to the members of the ACW. Also to note that next Sunday is the second Sunday of the month, and we will be having an 8 o'clock traditional Eucharist here, a said Eucharist at 8 o'clock next Sunday morning, and we'll continue to do that on the second Sunday of the month until the uh, summer break. Palm Sunday and Easter are rolling along, but so is our bishop's visit, who will be with us on the 24th and taking part in leading us in a service of confirmation. So we look forward to having him with us. The birthdays this week. Happy birthday this week to Warren Richardson, Mav Jenkins, and Garth Stevenson. And God's blessing on each one of you as you celebrate in the coming week. There's a little uh, note about Easter flowers. If you'd like to donate uh, funds towards Easter flowers in memory of a loved one, there's a note there that tells you how to go about doing that. Other announcements that I should be making today. Well, I invite you then to stand as you're able, and we will turn to page 185 for our opening greeting. The 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I invite you to join with me in our Catholic prayer for today. Together we pray. Creator God, you prepare a new way in the wilderness and water the desert. Help us to recognize your hand working miracles beyond our imagining. Open our hearts to be transformed by the new thing you are doing so that our lives may proclaim the extravagance of your love for all and its presence in Jesus Christ. We continue with the proclamation of the word. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. I am the Lord who opened a way through the waters, making a dry path through the sea. I called forth the mighty arm of Egypt with all its chariots and horses. I drew them beneath the waves and they drowned, their life snuffed out like a smoldering candle wick. But forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I am going to do. For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. The wild animals in the fields will thank me. The jackals and owls too, for giving them water in the desert. Yes, I will make rivers in the dry wasteland so my chosen people can be refreshed. I have made Israel for myself, and they will someday honor me before the whole world. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks be God. Continue with our psalm for today, which is Psalm 126. We'll read the psalm responsively by the half verse and then say together the prayer. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then was our mouth filled with laughter. 
Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord. Like the water of the Those who sowed with tears will reap the songs of joy. Those who go out weeping carrying the seed Together we pray. Praise to you, God of our salvation. Your generous gifts surpass all that we can ask or imagine. You have delivered us from the exile of sin and restored us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Glory and honor and praise to you forever and ever. Amen. Second reading. A reading from the letter to the Philippians. Though I could have, con have confidence in my own effort, if anyone could. Indeed, if others have reason for confidence in their own efforts, I have even more. I was circumcised when I was eight days old. I am a pure-blooded citizen of Israel and a member of the tribe of Benjamin, a real Hebrew if ever there was one. I was a member of the Pharisees who demand the strictest obedience to the Jewish law. I was so zealous that I harshly persecuted the church. And as for righteousness, I obeyed the law without fault. I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For, for his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all garbage so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death, so that one way or another, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things, or that I have already reached perfection. But I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Amen.
Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Six days before the Passover celebration began, Jesus arrived in Bethany, the home of Lazarus, the man he had raised from the dead. A dinner was prepared in Jesus' honor. Martha served, and Lazarus was among those who ate with him. Then Mary took a 12-ounce jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard, and she anointed Jesus' feet with it, wiping his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance. But Judas Iscariot, the disciple who would soon betray him, said, that perfume was worth a year's wages. It should have been sold and the money given to the poor. Not that he cared for the poor. He was a thief and since he was in charge of the disciples' money, he often stole some for himself. Jesus replied, leave her alone. She did this in preparation for my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. The Gospel of Christ. Praise Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, uphold me that I might uplift thee in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Well, over the last week, uh, I managed to track down one of my little portable microphones and uh, figured out how to make it work with the sound system, so I'm finally set free to preach the way I like to preach, but not having to stand still in one place as I do that. And today we come to the end of our focus on the, the disciplines of Lent, or as I call them, the opportunities of Lent. And, and throughout the last four weeks, uh, we have looked at numbers of the various disciplines that we saw as invitations in the wilderness to engage God and discover the joy and gift that there is in doing that. We began with, with, uh, with self-examination and penitence, laying before God our brokenness, looking for God for healing and wholeness and restoration as we do that. We look then at prayer, that opportunity to have a conversation with God where we share with God who we are, our concerns, our needs, our ups and downs, joys and failures. But we also take time to stop and listen as well. Conversations are two ways, so we need to listen for what God may be saying to us in our lives as we pray. Father George looked at fasting and that that idea of simplifying our lives and clearing the things out of the way that might distract or, or get in the way of us having that opportunity to engage the Holy One of God in our Lenten journey. Last week we looked at Scripture. We talked about it, the Bible being the greatest love story of all time as it describes how God again and again and again has acted in the world to draw and call all of us back into the loving relationship he wants to show to all of us that was ultimately demonstrated in the person of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, we look at almsgiving. Almsgiving. And, and that idea of, of giving money to help those in need as part of our Lenten disciplines. Uh, many of you will remember the little coin folders that we used to hand out at the beginning of Lent and we would all take our quarters and dutifully stick them in the little holes. And then as they all fell out again, we would dutifully take, take some scotch tape and tape them back into place. I remember as a kid in Sunday school, we used to get given a little can at the beginning of, of Lent. And we would take it home and we'd save up our pennies and nickels and fill up the can and we would bring it back in as part of our Easter gift. And I have to tell you, I got great enjoyment after the Sunday in Easter, going in and finding wardens and treasurers sitting at a large table that was completely covered in nickels and quarters and dimes. And in the days of old, of course, you didn't get those nice coin holders that you get now that they're already there and you just stick them. You had to try and roll them and how many times would go all back over the table again. And... Uh, 
Man, that was entertaining to watch that. But we have a different way of looking at what almsgiving is in today's world. And in fact, we rarely hear that <clears throat> referred to as one of the Lenten disciplines anymore. What we more often see is generosity in acts of love. And it reminds us that responding to God's world and the people in need in God's world isn't just about us giving a donation and that's our part, it's about us engaging the world as Christian people. And the idea of acts of love, which may include almsgiving as well, has that sense of engaging the world that God sends us out to. Now, when I prepared for this series of, uh, of dis about disciplines through Lent, I had no idea really what the Gospels were that lined up to the days in order that we did them. But I could not have chosen a better Gospel reading than the one that was offered up today about Jesus and Mary anointing his feet to support the theme for the day. This wonderful story of love, this wonderful story that is so deeply personal and touching, of Mary who had entertained with her, her sister and brother time and again Jesus, particularly at times in Jesus' life where he was going through all sorts of challenges. It was a place where he went for rest and respite and to gather himself again. And this visit in particular was that, about that. He was preparing for what lay ahead. He was preparing for that triumphant entry into Jerusalem that we'll hear about next week. He was preparing for the Last Supper. He was preparing, ultimately, for the cross of Good Friday. And all the burden of that, emotionally and spiritually, was upon him. And Mary, without knowing that, but knowing that Jesus somehow was different this time, wanted to do something just for him. To reach out to him and show him that he is loved and cared about. And so she does this amazing thing. And it's an act that is selfless. It's an act that is sacrificial. And it's an act that was unconditional. Selfless in that she placed herself at Jesus' feet. Something that a servant would have done, not one of the ladies of the household. The expense of that perfume that Judas so quickly admonished her about. And then just the unconditionality of the love that was shown to Jesus in that moment. And Jesus points out as she does that, of course, we remember that Jesus, they took him off the cross and they put him right into the tomb. They didn't have time to prepare the body for burial. And he points out that that's exactly what Mary was doing in this moment. Although she didn't realize it. That she was preparing him for what lay ahead in that act of love. And that act of love in itself points us to what will happen at the end of that week with the cross. She foreshadows for us in that moment, that moment of selfless, sacrificial, unconditional love, what would soon take place in the name of God through Jesus Christ on the cross. A selfless, sacrificial, unconditional act of love. Acts of generosity. Acts of love uh, to the world around us. And I, and I think to myself, you know, how many times have I said in, our, in my prayers when I've led meetings and things, in particular with outreach, Lord, may we see the face of Christ in the people that we meet in the world, but also may they see the face of Christ in us. <clears throat> This Sunday, as we end this part of our Lenten journey, reminds us that we're pointed outward. We're pointed outward every Sunday. But this Sunday in particular, as part of our Lenten journey, we've journeyed with God and with our Lord Jesus through the wilderness. We have engaged with, with God in that experience in numbers of different ways. But this one is the one that I think sends us back from the wilderness back out into the world. It reminds us that to truly engage God in our lives, it has to include engaging the world that God made out of love. 
and particularly to go out into that world and watch and reach for those particularly in need with generous acts of love. And follow the example of Mary and our Lord Jesus, and in those acts of love may they be selfless, sacrificial, and unconditional, so that others indeed will see the presence and face of Christ in all that we do as his people. And so today, acts of love. Mary demonstrates it. Our Lord offers it for the whole of the world. And we were sent in that spirit of love to engage the world around us, selflessly, sacrificially, and unconditionally. Amen. And Cheryl's going to lead us now in our prayers. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Father for the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. Today, in the Anglican Communion cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion. In the Anglican Lutheran cycle of prayer, we pray for the Most Reverend Anne Germond, Metropolitan, and the people and clergy of the ecclesiastical province of Ontario. In the Lutheran Church, we pray for the congregations of the Eastern Area of the Manitoba Northwestern Ontario Synod. In our diocese, we pray for Bishop Michael and Sophie. We also pray for the Parish of the Trent and the Reverend Lynn Mitchell. In our community, we pray for our congregations of St. John's and St. Lawrence and for our shared ministry. We also pray for our friends at St. Paul's, Canon Lynn Dillabaugh and Reverend Ted Guthrie. Good Shepherd Lutheran Church and Pastor Moses Prashad and Christ United Church Lynn. In our parish family, we pray for Debbie Warren Greer, John and Winnie, Went, Bernice White, and Carolyn White. We pray for our clergy, Father Michael and Father George, for our staff and our wardens. Let us pray to the Father, Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness, it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. Let us pray to the Father, Lord of compassion. In your mercy, hear us. For those preparing for baptism and confirmation, and for their teachers and sponsors, let us pray to the Father, Lord of compassion. In your mercy, hear us. For peace in the world, upholding especially today the people of Ukraine. We pray for the lives lost, families torn apart, the lost, the lonely, the homeless, the hungry, and those afraid. We pray for an end to this violence, for recovery, restoration, healing, and peace. We pray for our troops serving in many parts of our world, their families, and members of our regiment, the Brothel Rifles particularly for those who are currently deployed. We pray that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples. Let us pray to the Father, Lord of compassion. In your mercy, hear us. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer in any way. And remembering today those who are on our prayer list, in our hearts, and on our minds. We pray for refugees, prisoners, and all in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. Let us pray to the Father, Lord of compassion. In your mercy, hear us. For those whom we have injured or offended, let us pray to the Father, Lord of compassion. In your mercy, hear us. For grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God, let us pray to the Father, Lord of compassion. In your mercy, hear us. In communion with all those who have walked in the way of holiness, let us pray to the Father, Lord of compassion. In your mercy, hear us. God, our Father, in your love and goodness, you have taught us to come close to you in penitence with prayer, 
fasting, and generosity. Accept our Lenten discipline, and when we fall by our weakness, raise us up by your unfailing mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As you are able, would you please stand? <clears throat> Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please turn to those around you and offer the peace. As we prepare the altar for the Eucharist, we're going to sing our hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be, number 435. <clears throat> Join me in the prayer of the gift over the gifts found in the bulletin. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we have received from your bounty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue with Eucharistic Prayer 3 on page 198. As you're able, I invite you to stand, sit, or kneel, whichever you're most comfortable doing. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks because each year you give us this joyful season when we prepare to celebrate the Paschal Mystery with mind and heart renewed. You give us a spirit of loving reverence for you and of willing service to our neighbor. As we recall the saving acts that give new life in Christ, 
You bring the image of your Son to perfection within our hearts. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and singing. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be for us the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. As our Savior taught us, let us sing.
breaking of the bread, number 7 on page 213. We break this bread. Let your church be the wheat which bears its fruit in dying. Died with him, we shall live with him. If we hold firm, we shall live. My friends, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God.
As you are able, please stand for our concluding prayers that begin with the prayer after communion. Together, compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The God of reconciliation bless you. The grace of our Lord Jesus keep you. And the power of the Holy Spirit strengthen you this day and forevermore. We conclude with hymn number 451, King of Love, O Christ, we crown you. love, not that we love God. He is the sacrifice for our sin. If God loves us so much, if we love one another, let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.